Hey, my name's Arthur. I'm owner and instructor at Bike Teacher over in San Jose, California. We teach bicycle mechanic training. Wanted to touch on um, just owning an e-bike for the first time. What prompted me to get an e-bike? I was curious and it looked like fun. Um, I'd never ridden motocross, but that's something that looks like fun. I wish I would have got into that. So we're putting a little motor on this. We're getting up uh, hills a little faster. I like technical uphill climbs. Uh, I usually ride a, a hardtail Epic Specialized. It's a cross country bike. So, you know, with, with having an e-bike, I, I kind of had a, a little stigma, you know. First thing people would say is, oh, you're cheating. Well, that's not always the case. So you're gonna call a guy on the motocross who uh, likes to ride every weekend or races, you're gonna call him a cheater. Uh, things just didn't make sense. Anyways, I digress. Uh, things that I noticed uh, that needed some upgrading, this is from me riding a bike and a couple other buddies who ride. Definitely like to ride somewhat hard. We like technical, um, I like to work as well. So we like uphill climbing. So this bike really enhances throws a little bit more, shifts it into another gear, so to speak. So climbing uphill, we can certainly get up there faster, yes, but also it has you tackling that uphill technical terrain differently too, you know. And if you're planning on going on a lengthy ride, uh, where some areas where guys may be doing a, a shuttle, using a car to get up, do laps, well, maybe we don't need a shuttle anymore, but we're still gonna have to climb up that hill. And usually we're going, uh, pedaling as quickly as possible, but we're also trying to conserve the battery. So last few rides I've gone on, um, which uh, kind of kicked my butt, it was 30, about 30 mile rides over in the Santa Cruz mountains and we're doing laps and we're covering more terrain, uh, but you're also having to deal with your downhill as well. So you're, it's physical, you're using a lot of upper body, a lot of body English, you know, you're trying to have fun. And the climbing we did was probably about 45, 4,000 to 4,500. Definitely days uh, you need a couple water bottles. This one only has one holder for one water bottle. We don't carry backpacks. Uh, I just don't like this, something on my back. So you gotta come up with a different uh, solution. Start carrying a, a hip pack or something where you can carry some food, an extra water bottle. Having days like that, uh, it was fun. It was fun. Um, it's almost like being at a bike park where you're taking the, the gondola up the, the, ski, the ski mountain and towards the end of the day. Uh, it wasn't quite the end of the day. We're, these are probably about two to three hour rides and uh, you start feeling fatigued. You start getting tired uh, until you start getting maybe more acclimated. So you got to know when to say no because that's when you get hurt, right? Let's do one more run and that's when you crash. Body's fatigued. Do you have an extra weight here? coming off a 25 pound hardtail. This is a 50 pound bike, so extra 25 pounds. And you say, well, maybe the motor will take care of that. Sure, but I still have to handle and maneuver this guy downhill as well, which honestly, once you get going, um, this thing likes speed. So the faster you go, the more light and, and, and I won't say nimble, but um, you can still be pretty agile. You can st I can still do a lot of the stuff I was doing on a non full suspension e-bike. So I was having fun there. Parts or components that we're wearing. Um, it would seem like the chain would take a beating um, and that would happen in your higher power gears. So this has three levels. So eco wasn't really a problem shifting. That's where I mainly noticed big problems. Eco was okay, just shifting like your normal, normal pedaling. Usually when we, we're, we're shifting, we lighten up on the pedal pressure. Oh, I'm shifting, not at a great time and I just, shift the gear so you're I'm, I'm pausing or i'm lightening up for a second or two shifting let the derailleur do its job chain goes into gear boom continue pedaling uh trail uh there's a little more power involved um turbo is when you had a ton of power a ton of torque going in there so you would pause or lighten up on the pedal stroke to have your gear change in the rear motor paused another second or half second after you stopped pedaling so when I would pause, I'd shift, the motor kept going, I would shift and boom, you'd, it would do a hard shift. So every time it went from gear to gear, it would still have that pressure from the motor and it would just sound like it was just beging, 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 like the chain was gonna snap or you're just really being really rough on the gears. Yeah, you can definitely hear those shifts happening when you're in turbo and I was going uphill under pressure. So I was very conscious of that, so if you're in that high power mode, then um, pausing maybe an extra two seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, or maybe it is, shifting, 
let it drop in and and then you continue of course if you're if you're racing your buddies or you're in a race or you're just trying to be really efficient yeah pausing for two seconds for a gear gear change could be quite a lot but um and those are just little nuances little personalities that you're feeling that this bike has and you're adjusting to this goes for e-bike or non-e-bike my saddle goes up all right and oof. yeah so as i'm downshifting because i didn't prepare myself ahead of time i went into my easier climbing gears i'm still in eco so i feel okay shifting two three at a time but i am going into a very slow pedal cadence uh, where do you think you're doing light pressure on the pedals? That may not matter because that motor is going to do what it wants. Going uphill for the first couple times, I was in turbo, and uh, it wasn't a terribly technical. It was actually pretty smooth, kind of flowy, but a couple ruts and roots here. Uh, still uphill, uphill, not too steep, but it wasn't a problem there. Where I did see a problem being in turbo going uphill was you got into rocky territory where you kind of had to negotiate, do a little more body English to get over rocks and roots and kind of rollovers. Usually where you would pause your pedaling so you wouldn't spin out your rear tire to roll the bike over. Those things, uh, that's where I saw the motor being super powerful and you would pause and then trying to roll over. Okay, now I'm rolling, I'm feeling that extra 25 pounds and hitting a bump or a, when you're going to pedal, maybe there's a, a big rock you gotta kind of lift the front end so you are feeling that. So you're trying to maybe either you're, you're compressing and trying to jump up, pull up, but being in a, a technical up, you're not going very fast. So you don't, you don't have the, the luxury of getting in a position where you can load up your, your front fork and then have that power you spring up. When I go to pedal to get over those bumps, the motor would kick in. And if you're in high, highest level, then it's almost like you're bringing that front end up. So, and that was unexpected at first. So it kind of definitely throw your balance off. You get up a little too high, kind of screw up your, your rhythm. So that was something to negotiate as well. So that's when I found dropping down the power into one or two levels down, going into eco or trail. And then of course, finding that the, the correct uh, gearing over here, um, even though it's an e-bike, you're still adjusting your shifting. Definitely, I gotta get, change gears. I'm still in eco. Shifted about two or three gears. And I'm, I, I do that quite a bit. I'm always trying to keep uh, uh, the same cadence all the time. So when we're doing those longer rides, you know, we figure, okay, we're gonna be out there for 25, 30 miles, hitting, you know, four to 5,000 feet of climbing. Um, we gotta uh, conserve on that battery. So when we're whizzing by the other guys who don't have e-bikes, um, <laughs> being on the other side, you're like, oh, at first it, it hurts, it kicks you in the gut. And you're like, oh man, those guys are jerks, but you say that jokingly. We are working still pretty hard in that eco mode because the faster you spin, the faster you go. And you just kind of get caught up in that if you're that type of rider who just wants to go fast all the time. Of course, you can take it easy, um, but depending who you're riding with, you know, it's always pedal on the gas type of thing. So um, being in eco mode, trying to conserve this, apparently this says you can get about 70 miles um, distance on eco mode. Um, whether or not it says you can do this while still achieving, you know, 4,000 feet of elevation, or is this just, you know, flowy, um, hilly fire roads. So, you know, I, I would assume the more climbing you're doing, definitely in the, in the eco, you're feeling more um, of your energy being used because you're trying to keep the flow. I feel the bike kind of, um, we hit those points where it gets somewhat steep where we got those little rollers or rocks or roots to get up and over. The body comes in, you're pushing, your legs are getting tired, they're starting to burn because we're trying to keep it in eco mode to make that ride last a little longer. And if you time everything right, then you can get in that, that area where you're like, hey, you know, it's, it's time to head home. We got another five miles to get out of here and it's somewhat climbing um, or rolly. So now we have enough battery bars left, if that's the case. Turbo, turbo it goes, and I am cruising home. And that puts a smile on my face too. So if you can manage your time right, your energy levels correctly, you can maximize this, this bike here. So no matter what type of brand or make or model you have, and hopefully your areas are allowing e-bikes to get in there. I hope a lot of these rules change, um, the ones that are not allowing e-bikes to go in. Um, not sure what the reasoning is. I'm getting all kinds of different reasons, but I hope to see more involvement from the manufacturers. I'm not sure to what extent they're they're trying to help fight for 
keeping e-bikes on the trails or getting them into areas where they're not allowed because I don't think they're beating up the trail. A lot of it's just, if they're worried about rider etiquette, then that's just a matter of time before you know, we get everyone on the same page to, to be cool out there, don't run people over. Uh, if you're going the other direction on a trail and you're zipping, um, you need to check yourself. You know, just a lot of common sense needs to come into play. Just have a conversation.